tonight's Bible study, Wednesday night Bible study. Before we start in prayer, I want you to, uh, if you have your Bibles with you, uh, we're going to look at Romans chapter 8, uh, verses 38 and 39 tonight. Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. Start tonight, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we uh, will thank Him for what He has done for us. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for who you are and what you have done, and we just thank you that we can call on you. Lord, we pray for any request or anyone who has a need tonight. Lord, we pray for Donnie as he goes for his test tomorrow. Lord, just bless us as we continue to try to do things online and as we try to reach our community and reach out in, in Bible study and in prayer. And we just thank you for Jesus tonight and what he means to us. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Um, as we get started tonight, we're as I said, we're in Romans 8, uh, and we're looking at 38 and 39. And Paul is sharing with the Romans, uh, he says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature or created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So Paul was sharing uh, his confidence. You know, uh, in today's times with uh, <clears throat> all the things that are going on around us, we need to we need to pray that we have confidence in God and His love and and his power and so uh, Paul I think here was letting the Romans know and the church at Rome uh, that uh, I have confidence I'm persuaded I'm, I have confidence in God and what he is uh, doing in my life and I've got confidence that he has control of my life and he has his hand on my life so one of the things tonight, I, I hope that if you take nothing else out of this, <clears throat> I hope you try to understand how important it is that once you become a Christian, that you need to be persuaded to have confidence in God, in the God that you have entrusted your life to uh, through Jesus Christ. As we uh, look at the scripture tonight, Paul said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life you know, one of the things that I think almost everybody uh, maybe doesn't fear, but uh, anticipates or as well as maybe uh, has some apprehension of dying. You know, uh, ever, ever uh, remember a song that said everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. And so uh, one of the things that we as humans uh as we live through life is some have some apprehension of dying, not necessarily for their own self, if they're a Christian, but for others that are around them that are left behind in, in that situation. And so Paul said, death cannot separate us from the love of Christ. You know, Jesus Christ is going to love us no matter what. If you accept Christ as your personal Savior, death does not separate you from God. Death only connects you to God and, and, and you wind up in front of God and with God and uh, with Jesus Christ. So death cannot separate us from God if we know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. <clears throat> Nor life, and life on earth and all the things that we do and all the things that we do right and wrong. Uh, as we uh, go about this world, uh, cannot separate us from the love of Christ, which is actually, the, I'm sorry, the love of God in Christ. And when we get down to the bottom uh, uh, of this scripture, the, back, the last part of this scripture, we'll go over a little more about what is the love of God that is in Jesus Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> and so, he says, nor angels. There's not an angel in heaven that can get between us and God. 
that is uh, allowed to be between us and God, that God created the angels to serve him. God created them to uh, be a blessing and as well a blessing to us. And so uh, the angels, even God's angels, cannot get uh, between us and God, cannot separate us from God. Uh, also rulers. What about rulers? Now there's a couple of things that uh, we can look at here. One is uh, rulers on earth, especially. Uh, you know, at this point, we are uh, currently separated uh, from our building. We're currently separated uh, from our congregation physically. We're separated from congregating together physically. But that will not stand between us and God's love in Christ. That will not stand between us and our salvation. Just because we're not in the building doesn't mean that we're not saved or we're not Christians or we're not the church. So remember that even though rulers have said we cannot uh, meet together due to the dangers of COVID-19, we are still not separated from our Lord. And so don't forget that. Keep that in mind because then you are convinced uh, that he can and you have confidence that he can take care of our needs. Now, it says, nor the things present. And speaking of that, uh, the present time is the time that we have, uh, we have come upon that COVID-19 has separated us from a lot of things. It's separated us from our jobs, and it's separated us from our uh, family. <clears throat> it's separated us from our church and separated us from a lot of things that we do each and every day. Our routines have changed. Our attitudes have changed toward our health. Our uh, methods have changed. When we go to work now, I have to wear a mask all day. And it's different. It's, it's very different. It's a little bit confining sometimes. <clears throat> and so the things present that are going on but are, are difficult, but they can't separate us from God's love in Christ. They can't separate us from the salvation that Jesus Christ has given us. So, nor things to come, he says. And so, uh, when we look at this, no matter what is going on now, or what will be going on next year, or the year after, or the year after, no matter what's going on, the things to come will not separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ. And so these things won't keep us away from being uh, worshipers of Jesus Christ and of God. They won't keep us away from having fellowship in this way or maybe others, other ways. The things to come will only be in God's hands. And what's next is in God's hands. And what's to come is in God's hands. So these things will not separate us from Christ. Now, what about powers? What kind of powers are we talking about here? I think part of these things that we talk about, we talk about rulers, those are earthly rulers, but I think powers are, are a little different. And I look at it this way. The power of God is one way we one thing we can see one one part of our life as Christians but there's also powers that are demonic there's powers that are from Satan and so these things cannot as well cannot separate us from God's love so i know you may remember job job was told or God has asked, asked Satan about Job and told Satan that you can have Job, you can have everything about him except one specific thing, and that was his life. And God is the only one allowed to give and take that life. And so the powers that be, or the power of Satan, or the power of his demonic presence, 
or the power as Satan's angels, of course, or his power cannot separate us from God's love that is in Christ Jesus. It says, nor height. You can go as high as you want to on this earth, as high, high as you can. You can go into space, into the atmosphere. It cannot separate you from God. God is there. God is here. And his, his love is here. His love is there. His love is anywhere you are and anywhere you will, will ever be. Neither height nor depth, no matter how far down in the ground you want to go. God is still here because he created all this. He is still, his love extends farther than height is or depth is. And it says that he loves us and he forgives our sins as far as the east is from the west. And if you've ever tried to go to the east to find the completion of the east to start into the west, you won't find it because it's eternity. He loved us so much that he gave his son, Jesus Christ, to uh, die on a cross for us. We'll get to that in a moment. It says, nor any other created thing. What is created? You know, you cannot take yourself away from God's love once you have experienced it. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can't take that away. It is an eternal gift. It is his gift. It is the gift of God. Through his love, he gave Jesus Christ. So any other created thing will not separate us from it, from him. And so what is a created thing? Of course, God created us. God created everything around us. Just, you know, go look out your window and he created it. He created our minds and our hearts and he, he, recreated, he created our thought he created our emotion, and he created our physical body. And God created us in his image. And it says no other created thing can separate us from God's love that is in Jesus Christ. So now we come to the last part of that verse. And we say, what is the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord? Well, what it is is in John 3.16, many of you know this, and if you would like to quote it as I recite it, you certainly can. In John 3.16, we find out what God's love is. God, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we see that the love of God is in Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, that his love was so great for us that he gave the ultimate bloodshed sacrifice for us. And uh, as I said before, the Old Testament says there must be a blood sacrifice for sin. And so Jesus gave his blood and shed his blood for our sins. He died, he was buried, and he is resurrected. And we believe, and we've just uh, celebrated Easter Sunday not long ago, and we celebrated his resurrection, that he is risen from the dead. And we see here that nothing that is created, nothing, no powers, no life, death, etc., etc., none of this can separate us from the love of God. That is in Jesus Christ. And that God's, God loves us so much that he gave his son, Jesus and we know what Jesus did. And we know why he did it. He did it because God instructed him to do so. God willed him to do so. And God said, I love my creation so much, I do not want them to live eternally in a place called hell. Now, nothing can separate us from God's love. Now, God loves us all, doesn't he? God loves every one of us. He loves us so much and he, and he wants us to do his will and he wants us to follow him. God wants that all would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. God wants all of you to be saved. He wants you to make that choice. He gave you the free choice to make it and you can either choose God or not. I will warn you, if you do not choose the Lord, he will punish you 
for your sins, you will pay for your sins. And what happens here is, is that Jesus died and shed his blood for those who accept him as personal Savior. He died for everybody. But all it, all it takes is someone to accept him and to ask him into their heart. If we don't accept Christ, we're given a choice. We can choose the other route. The other route is eternity in hell, paying the punishment for our own sins. And so I urge you and, and uh, encourage you to come to know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior tonight, there's three things I've shared over and over again on these videos, and you will hear the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ is, if you, uh, for us to admit, admit we are sinners and come to him in admission of our guilt of sin. The second thing is to believe, to believe that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead, that he is alive, that he has died and shed his blood for our sins, and been buried, and now is risen, and is alive, and that he had the capability to conquer death, because he is the Son of God. Now, confess. Confession is made. The Bible says that believing in the heart, confession is made to salvation. And so if you believe in your heart that Jesus is the Savior, and, and, uh, and, and and, and you confess before him and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, admitting I'm a sinner, believing I can, you can save me, he can save you, and uh, confessing before him, Lord, I'm a sinner, I need you as Savior in my life. And, he, and ask him to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. So tonight, one of the most important things you need to know is that you need to be convinced that the love of God in Jesus Christ surpasses all things, everything. Nothing can separate you from his love that is in Jesus Christ. And so, one, you can be confident. If you're saved, if you've asked Jesus Christ into your heart tonight and you've accepted him, you can be confident that he is with you. He will constantly be with you for eternity, forever. Now, second thing is that when you leave this earth, when you uh, die, you can be confident that you will stand before God, a believer, uh, and he will see Jesus on you in the, in the blood. He will see you and he will know that you're one of his he already knew it before he would bring you home anyway. So don't forget, be convinced and be certain that no matter what happens, life or death, or angels, or rulers, present things, things to come, powers, nor height, nor depth, or any other created thing will separate you from this love. So tonight, if you know Jesus, you can comment amen. Tonight, if you know somebody that needs Jesus, just like we were doing Who's Your One, pray for that person and pray that God would touch their lives with his love, with the love of God through his son Jesus. Now tonight, I want you to remember all these people in, in prayer. Those who have been mentioned, remember Susie, we're waiting on test results. And remember uh, Donnie tomorrow as he goes uh, to do his heart cath. So please pray for them and pray for Libby as she has to wait in the parking lot. So, And I understand, I did that too, Libby. I had to wait on Susie. So tonight, as we close, please pray for these people. And if you have other requests, you can certainly do that, or you can text me or Susie and let us know. Pray for me as I go to work, because everybody's getting checked before they go in. Hopefully nobody will wind up sick of COVID-19. So let's go to the Lord in prayer as we close. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the beauty of it. We thank you for the scripture tonight, and we know that nothing, none of these things can separate us from your love that is in Jesus Christ, that you gave your son
for our sins. Now, Lord, we just pray that as we continue to serve you, whether it be online or out and about or at work, Lord, we just pray that we would serve you well and do all that you ask us to do and continue to be the church, even though we can't be in the building right at the moment. Bless us, keep us, take care of us. In Jesus' name, amen. You all have a good night, and God bless you, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.